Miss anybody? Everybody good? I see Nate on here. Nate, are you on here? I'm glad you're on, buddy. I appreciate it. Good to have you back. All right, I'm ready. Ready, Dre. Dre. He trying to unmute. Sorry, the quarter wasn't ready. Hey, Coach, uh, I was curious with Drew Sanders. Do you guys have conversations about him, you know, with meeting his former team and stuff, or is it you just let it go with the flow? Well, I didn't have a formal conversation with him. He was – him. he and Bump were over in Shear's office, and I just walked in, and, I mean, he's – I just told him the old stories about me being at Blaine County and we I was at Watonga, Gary, and Canton. We'd go back and compete against them. And I just tell them some funny stories, you know, about my my history. Obviously, not any kind of stage like this. Um, but no, you know, he's such a mature guy and and uh I'm sure he'll have feelings, but um uh, we try to keep it as light as we can on on that situation, and I think, I think he, he I think he'll be fine, and and uh, he'll obviously want to play well, and I'm sure the guys over there will obviously want to play well against him, but I think they would regardless of whether he had transferred or not. To be honest with you, it's been a couple of games since you guys have forced a turnover, and they always say turnovers come in bunches. I know you, I, I see you guys practicing, stripping the ball, and all that kind of stuff. But is that something that you you kind of talk about? It's been a while since we had a turnover. Or, yeah, uh, we have. You know, we talk about that specifically. We talk about winning the turnover battle, and obviously you have to get some to to win it. And and uh, certainly are making the emphasis on it. You know, each season. What I'm learning a little bit is each season uh, is different. You know, um, what happens during the season. You know, sometimes you get more than others, but we're certainly emphasizing it, and and hopefully, this game's the one. You know, and uh, but uh, we're sure we're sure teaching it, and uh, sometimes those things just happen. But you knock a ball out, you don't. You're just tackling, but uh, uh, certainly are aware of that stat that you bring up, and we're, we're sure working on it, Trey. Thanks, coach. Uh huh. Bob. Hey, Sam, speaking of turnovers, I think Alabama's only got three takeaways. Well, what do you make of that? And does that maybe make you feel good that, you know, you guys won't turn it over against them? Well, um, you know, Bob, I don't know if it makes a difference or not in, in far as blowout wins and things of that nature, but, you know, they've really only had one game that was close at all, you know, so – um, a lot of the, they've gotten a lot of second and third team guys reps and things of that nature. So um, they may have an adequate number of turnovers if you just count the the ones, the first team guys that are out there playing. But um, no, I mean, I, I don't I really haven't thought about it, to be honest with you, a lot. It's just been worried a little bit more about us and how we can get them and how we can hold on to the ball. And, you know, it's interesting, both teams have pretty good transfers from Georgia Tech, you know, Gibbs for them, and obviously Jordan for you guys. I was wondering first what, what, what you've seen from Gibbs. He seems, for running back, seems really involved in the passing game. And then Jordan, you know, he started off well and seems like he's been pretty consistent for you. What, what do you think about the, that? Well, Gibbs, we knew he was a great player out of high school. That's one of the first places I went. 
uh, with Jimmy Smith. He was committed to Georgia Tech, and we obviously went in there to talk to him. He didn't re really want to talk to us very long, and I respected that. Um, but uh, he is a wonderful back out of the backfield. I mean, he can he can run an option route, an angle route, as good as anybody in the country. He catches the ball extremely well, but you know, he's going to hurt you um, – with the ball in his hand, they certainly use him at running back, handing, handing the ball at running back to him a lot. Um, just an outstanding player, has been for a long time. We uh, Scott pulled up some things about uh, for the team when he was returning kickoffs for uh, Georgia Tech as well, uh, just to show what kind of athlete he's been for a while. Uh, J.D. has really done a nice job for us. Um, we went out to get him uh, – a big part of it was for his pass rushing ability. And he certainly hadn't disappointed as a man, as a player, uh, hadn't disappointed us one bit. We're, we're awful lucky that we, that we got him. Thanks. Hi. Coach, you mentioned uh, Rashad Dabinian as kind of a change-up guy for you on Monday. I'm curious through four games, what you thought of him uh, so far being a true freshman. I think he's done a great job. Uh, he's a tough run, tough kid, tough runner, never in trouble, never, never late for a class, never on any list. I mean, just a wonderful addition to the team. And he brings that toughness, that Cedar Grove, Georgia toughness that Jimmy and, and the, the newer coaches that instilled in him there at Cedar Grove. Um, that's the one, to be honest with you. I know we've talked a lot about AJ and about Dominique and, of course, Rocket. But that's the one right there that I would I would like to see get get more carries in a game. Um, he certainly had a couple of really good, nice carries uh, in the A and M game, and that's the one we probably need to learn a little bit more about. Um, but uh, I've been extremely pleased with him. He can cut on a dime, and I think he's going to be a really good player for us. I, he is now, but I think he's going to be a really, really good running back for us. And those two carries in the, the A&M game were both in the fourth quarter in a really critical spot. Um, does that just kind of show how y'all trust in him to, to put him in such a, a big spot like that? Absolutely. Uh, it's a little bit more of a change up. A guy that, you know, can cut on a dime, some things of that nature. It's just a different back. And of course, that would change it up, you know, uh, immediately. But his running style is very unique and uh, – uh, we trust him. It certainly does. Shows showed him a lot of trust there, and and uh, I was glad that that he got those carries in those critical situations because we we believe in him. Scotty, hey, Sam, I'm curious for your thoughts because just on the importance of of punt coverage this weekend. I think Bama's got the national leader in in return yardage, and they've had some some pretty big totals in recent weeks. They have. I mean, he's he's a he's an elite re returner back there, McKinstry, and um, uh, you know the our coverage unit's been good. Um, last week, uh, Smith didn't have any returns on us. Um, uh, certainly, that's up to our punter and our gunners. Uh, we want to punt the be ball better than what we did last week. What what we have. Uh, and I believe that we will, but our coverage units have been pretty good. We're well aware of of, uh, of him back there returning punts, and so we need to do exactly what we did last week, make sure we punt it in the right zone, make sure we have hang time uh, so we can get down there and cover him. But we highly respect him, really good player. Earlier this week, I went back and watched some of last year's game at Bama, and you guys, I think, answered a score of theirs three or four different times. I'm just, I guess, just being able to respond or throw your own punches again this week. How, how big might that be? Well, I think we're going to have to. I mean, we're going to have to score. We're going to have to score some points, you know, to 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 stay in the game. And uh, uh, we were able to respond last year. The the problem is. Uh, for most part of that game, it was we were down two at one point three t three scores, and uh, and we got we battled back into it. We we need to strike as fast as we possibly can. Last year, I felt like we was playing catch up the whole 
whole time. I think we got within six at one point, uh, but um, we 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 need to strike fast, and and uh, hopefully we're able to do that. But but it showed that we were resilient, and that you know we scored thirty five, and that was that that was a big deal for the offense. We just we couldn't hold them for un, under forty two last year, and uh, they're as good offensively and defensively probably better on defense than they were a year ago and and certainly as good or better on offense. If, if I remember right, I think on Monday you mentioned um, Eric Gregory a time or two, had a sack I think last weekend. What what growth are you seeing from him so far? A lot. You know, he's always been a hard worker, really hard working kid, but now, you know, he's a little quicker, a little stronger, a little bigger um, and older and has seen things, you know, you learn a lot by playing and he's done that, but he's always been a reliable guy uh, that played extremely hard. And I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that it's uh, showing up for him uh, and for the team, but he just, he's just a little quicker, a little stronger, more knowledge. and just playing a little bit better this year than what he ever had. And he never played bad. It's just, he's playing his best ball right now. Tom. I think you had like 460 something yards on Bama last year. Uh, you subtract Burks from that equation, but still, I mean, is there some carryover things that you did in that game that, you know, you might might be able to apply to this one? Well, I think the thing that we did last year that allowed us to get the ball to Burks and 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 uh, Warren Thompson caught a long ball there as well, and um, and Trey Knox had several catches in that game, maybe four or five. I can't remember the number, but several. Uh, is we ran the ball pretty well. And, you know, for us to have offensive success, we we have to um, – we don't have to run the ball a lot. We just have to run it when we want to. And uh, that can open up a lot of things for us. Uh, and and we did a decent job a year ago of that, and certainly we, we have to do it again. But, I again, I think they're better on defense than they were a year ago. and. And uh, I think they're really good, and and that's going to be a tall task trying to turn around and hand the ball off. But for us to have success, we have to have uh, positive running yards when we when we decide to do that. What's so stout about their defensive backfield for this year's team? And and you said they're better. Why, why, how are they better defensively? I think they're better on the D line. Uh, Toa Toa is playing. I think his best ball I've, I've ever seen him play. I mean, he he he's all over the place. There's not a any type of a weakness uh, uh, in their defense. Um, and the thing that sticks out the most is they just don't miss tackles. I mean, you you think, man, this is going to go for twelve yards, ten yards, whatever it is, and it's a one yard gain. They they are one of the best tackling teams I've I've seen. And uh, I think that's what makes them so good. They've got the size, the speed on the D-line. Obviously, they, you know, Will Anderson's down there. But uh, and then the second level with Toto and his, and the guys around him, they're just a really, really good defense. Wrap us up, Trey. Yeah, Coach, I'm curious how you felt Dominic did after getting – Excuse me. After getting five carries in the in the last game, um, I guess just kind of dusting off the knee a little bit. How does he feel, and, and what do you think of him? You know, I thought he I thought he had a good game. Um, he turned up in there a couple of times where it looked like the old Dominique to me. Um, you know, the the there's not a problem there with uh, I was because I was going to say well the problem is because there's not a problem. Um, we're, we're still trying to figure out, you know, who back two is, uh, still trying to figure out who back three is. And uh, uh, the only way I know how to do it is is give them some carries and, and figure it out. And when you have four backs, it's just hard to, hard to get a guy a, a lot of reps because I can tell you, I, I feel like A.J. Green is much better than he was last year. Uh, Rashad DeBenia wasn't here. And so with Dominique coming back, I, I, to be honest with you, in the first game, I thought that was about the right amount of carries for him. And and he did he did a really nice job. Him and 
Dominion to me really st stood out last week. And well, heck, AJ went nine for average four yards a carry or so, and Rocket did too. So the line was doing a good job. We just have a lot of bags, Trey, to be honest with you. And it's kind of uh, hard to figure out because, to, in my opinion, there's not, you know, Rocket would be the standard there. And then the other three have something different to offer us. And it's hard to get them all the carries, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, 79 degrees, partly cloudy, looking like the weather. And uh, uh, that Texas game is probably the, the best home crowd environment I've ever seen. You expecting something like that from the crowd on Saturday? I would, and I don't know this for anything, but knowing the state of Arkansas and the passion for the Razorbacks, I would think this would be the best crowd since I've been here. The rowdiest, the best, the, I guess it's a red out. And, uh, but I'm hearing people are already lining up for parking spaces and things of like that as early as today. And maybe that's wrong. I don't know, but that's what I heard. And so I think, I think everybody's excited and we, you know, hopefully we can, we can put it on a show for the fans. We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you, coach. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Go Hawks.